Hi, and welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you how to create this kind of browser image frame thing using WordPress block styles and some fairly simple CSS. So let's jump straight in. First, get rid of myself a little bit. So this is what we're trying to recreate here where you can see uh, this image has a bit of a frame with like a, a rounded corner and some and some buttons at the top. So it looks a bit like a kind of browser window. Um, good for showing screenshots of, of work we've been done. So this is actually our website that I'm building, rebuilding for High Rise Digital. I'm just playing about with some design ideas, came across this one and thought it would be really fun to show you how to do it because it's really easy. So the first thing we're going to have to do is let's jump into some code. And I've got my editor.js file here. Uh, and this is where I register custom block styles. It's a bit messy, sorry. Um, but actually, it could be useful just to show you where that's actually, this file itself is actually kind of registered. So if I go, it's in my theme. And this will be interesting. I think it's in block editor. It might not be. Tell you what I'll do. I'll just do a search for editor.js. Could be in here. Okay. Yep. So I'm using this action in queue block editor assets. I'm calling this function here. Um, HD 2022 theme Gutenberg scripts, uh, and that is telling telling it where our um, editor.js file is. So I'll just leave that on screen just for a second if you need to copy that at some point to, to use in your own theme. Let's just close those down. So once I have this file created, um, we open it up here with wp.dom ready, and then we can use this wp.blocks. Uh, this is actually unregistering block styles here from the image, and then block style down here. So this is for the image block. We're actually going to do this today on the media text block. So um, I'll just do a search for media because I know I've used this kind of thing before. There we go, media text. And I've actually got it in here already. So I've already got the default style. Um, I've got what's what I've called an overlap style, which is different. And then I've created my new style here called browser frame. So I've given it a name and a label, um, and then we're good to go. So once we've done that, uh, so I'm just this is just from scratch. Now I'll just refresh the page. Everything's gone, so we're kind of starting from scratch. So if I go into the edit page now. Is that style available? Browser frame. Let's just refresh the page just to double check everything is as it should be. I'll just click on the media text block here. And here we've got our browser frame style. So I'm just going to select that, click update, and go back into our page here. I'm just going to inspect here. So what we're going to want to see is is style browser frame. So I don't know if you can see it there in the classes, um, is style br browser frame. So we've got the uh, we've got the class we were going to use to hook into. So that's all we need to do from, from a kind of Gutenberg block editor, JavaScript point of view. Um, everything else now we can do directly in the CSS. So I've got actually a file here called project-media.txt dash text dot scss. So this is a SAS file um, with the SCSS syntax. Um, and this is where I do my customizations for this particular uh, block. So I've already got, for example, my overlap style like I was talking about there. So we're going to want to create a new one. Um, I'm going to keep it really simple and just put it here. So is dash style dash browser dash frame. Um, let's just test to see if this is working. Okay. okay, so so let's just have a look at the structure of this then. So we've got the media text block itself, which is where the class is applied. Within that, we've got this figure 
element and this is the wp block media text media class and then within that we've got the image so interestingly while hovering over this i notice because i'm doing this kind of pushing the image off to the side style the um the figure itself isn't actually the width of the image so if we applied some kind of effect like a, a border to the to the figure it's not going to be wide enough so we're going to have to apply that to the image so let's just do that first um if i grab this class i'm going to target that and just to and then i'm just going to do this there might be a better class to use for the image so i don't have to use an element Okay, so I could do something like if we want to use classes, um, class um, is it is it that? Is that kind of pains or starts with? I can't remember. Let's just try this. Let's try it. Um, order. Top. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna use relative units. I'm gonna make that a bit. Let's go two rem solid red just for full. Im oh, let me spell solid correctly. Full impact. See if that works. Okay, so that's good. So my selector did work. So that class selector was just grabbing the first part here. So it can be. It can have any number after it, but it's WP something starting with WP dash image. Okay, so we've got the beginnings of a frame let's uh change the color of that to something a bit more suitable i like the size of it that color's okay it kind of maybe a little bit darker let's just try somewhere probably in between you could do some kind of color picker if you want to grab a better color but i'll stick with that for now um, we want to round the corners so I'm going to do that on the whole image and I'm going to use the same size. That's a bit much, actually. That looks a bit more like a browser. Okay. Easy, right? So that almost looks like a browser, but we just need something a little bit extra uh, to give it a bit of pizzazz. And what I'm going to do is add those little red uh orange and green dots in the top left corner so how are we going to do that um i can't easily add any new um markup because this is a core block um so i'm going to try to work with what i've got and the way i'm going to do that is actually using a pseudo element to create my circle so let's let's start with one circle and we'll go from there so I'm going to actually add this to the figure because I don't think I can create pseudo element content within an image. Um, so within this here, I can say, and uh, I can do before or after, and I'm going to say content is empty, display block. I don't know if I need that, but I'm going to add it. I'm going to say width. 0.5 rem, we might want to go smaller. Height 0.5 rem. I'm going to say uh, border radius 50% because I want that to look like a circle. And I'm going to say background red, and that's not just for debugging. I actually do want it to be red this time. So let's see. Does that exist anywhere at the minute? Okay. So there's a red dot up in the corner. Uh, we might want to go slightly bigger with that potentially would one look too big i think it would yeah i think it's going to be a bit big so let's go cut this in half in fact let's go nice yeah that's good okay i'm liking that but now we need to position this um so at the minute it is just happening before the image so you can see it's that and then the image sits underneath it so we want to what i'm going to do is i'm going to absolutely position this i sometimes do my positioning at the top i don't know why um, 
Oh, you're going to disappear. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Uh, and then I'm going to move it down by what? Uh, hmm. It's kind of like, what was the size of the radius? Two rem. So it's going to be like, I'm just going to say, let's just move that minus, yeah. And I'm just going to do this as a calculation. Obviously, you could just, you could just write 0.66 in there. There we go. And I'm going to say left. Uh, let's try one RAM for now. Whoa. OK. So what I've now realized is that it's positioning it absolutely to the the whole media text rather than the figure. And that is because the figure doesn't have position. So position relative on the figure. Just pop that back in. Perfect. Okay, so we've got a dot. It's pretty well positioned. Um, but now we need two more. Unfortunately, I've only got one more pseudo element to play with. So I could do an after and make it green and position it. But what about the orange one? So I came up with an idea of using um, box shadows instead. So we'll start um, here. We'll say box shadow. And I'm going to say something like zero. I'm going to change these units. So we don't, want, we don't want to move vertically. We do want it to move horizontally. We don't want any spread or any shadow, like any blur. So zero, zero for those. And then we can just give it a color. Let's see what happens. Ha! I did these the wrong way around. <laughs> okay, far away. That's perfect. Okay. Nice. So now we've got our orange uh, and our red. We could now add the green as a after pseudo element um, by just copying most of this, uh, just changing the position and obviously removing the box shadow. But what we can do with box shadow is just add another one. Um, so if I just grab that and I just say green. And I don't know what this is going to be, but let's just guess at it. Perfect. There you go. And that is our little browser frame using some simple CSS and a uh, block style in the block editor. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider uh, leaving a like. Every single one matters uh, because we don't get very many. So it's really great to get some likes. Uh, and also, if you, if you do want more of this content, um, I put out videos like this. My colleague Mark puts out more back-end focused videos. We've also got our WP Cafe show every week where we just chat about agency life and WordPress development. So if you'd like all of that stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully see you back here again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.